morning, viewers. We are glad that uh, you had the opportunity to join us this morning in our lesson discussion. Uh, with me this morning to help us uh, discuss uh, the lesson is uh, Elder John Omingo. Good morning, viewers. And on my right is Elder Master Sochola. Happy Sabbath, viewers, and welcome. And I am Moses Duando. Uh, ready to present to you this. Uh, before we start, let's have a word of prayer and I'll ask uh, the message to pray for us. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you greatly for allowing us to see this day. Many were the prophets you gave your word to prophesy about the end time. They longed to see these days, but they couldn't because they are pressed. It was this time for us Father, we thank you for allowing us to witness wonderful things happening at the end. As we live in the end, we cannot be sure how to step our steps. We need your direction. You have directed us by your word, which is the sole advisor that is meant to help us all the way, the scriptures. As we learn your word, the scriptures, Lord, we invite the Holy Spirit to lead us. The same way the Spirit led the writers, inspired the writers, the same Spirit may help us understand you in your scriptures. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, elders. We are happy that the Lord God has given us this opportunity today again to examine His Word and to get to know uh, what uh, He is telling us in the scripture. As you are aware, viewers, uh, we are in our second quarter and the lesson is how to interpret the scriptures last week we did lesson three and our discussion was on the origin and nature of the bible this week we are in lesson four and we are going or we are going to actually we are in lesson three sorry we are going to talk about jesus and the apostle view of the bible we want to know that what was Jesus' view of the Bible, the way it was, and the apostles whom we know came much after the Old, Old Testament was written. Uh, we had a number of books which are going to help us to study this uh, week's lesson. And we welcome you viewers to feel free and uh, forward your questions, forward your comments so that uh, we can get opportunity to answer them here on set and some we may answer later. Our memory text this morning comes from the book of Matthew uh, 4 verse 4. And I welcome and the gentleman to read for us Matthew 4 4. Thank you. Uh, Matthew reads that uh, but he answered and said it is written man shall not live by the bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Thank you. This is the word of Jesus Christ. Uh, we know that uh, after the baptism of Jesus Christ, he went to the wilderness to fast and pray. And he has been there for like 40 days and nights. Uh, at this moment where he is making this statement is Matthew 4.4. 4. He has taken him 40 days and 40 nights without food. And in our physical human lineage, this is the very most vulnerable point Jesus was in. And Satan comes to oh, attempt him. And we see that the response he's giving him is actually based on the scripture. And this is the interest that we are going to have today. This is what we are going to learn today. In many a times you see the interpretation of the Bible or based on our modern day philosophy, modern day education. And what we are going to learn today, just like uh, the author of the lesson is telling us, that the Bible, the way it is written, should be interpreted in a way that magnifies the name of God and in a way that brings out the intention of God and not our intention. He says here, very interestingly, that so many documents have been written so many interpretations have been done to the extent that we are changing the Bible to become, and I quote, 
or we are changing from God's view of humanity and making it man's uh, humanity's view of God, which is very wrong. Mm -hmm. We need to stick to the origin, original intention of the Bible. And uh, oh, my elders, I don't know, in the introduction part of it, in this conversation of Jesus and uh, the devil, I don't know what you can bring in uh, in the job. What, 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 what is coming out clearly is the right context that at this point of temptation of Jesus, he had to refer to a written word. And the, the topic for the lesson today is telling us how did Jesus and his disciples interpret and uh, use the written word. The written word was the word of God, as we learned in the lesson last week. And so then the, the, the interaction and the reference that Jesus gave, followed by the one that was given by the disciples, will guide us and lead us into understanding and seeing how we also should deal with the same same word that was written is there we have the additional new testament but we'll see how the two relate and how christ and his apostles handled it and then that will empower us and enable us to be able to see how then to tell the difference between the opinions between the critiques and the, the human way of dealing with the written document this is completely different because the written documents you write a paper, you write a, a research material, or any investigation in science, or any, any of the human subjects. Normally with the time, we find new editions coming up. But this word of God is, 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 in, is, in the, is dealt with in the original sense as it was, and that's how we should take it as we proceed on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Maybe you can add that uh, word before we proceed. Thank you so much. The other thing I would add is that when the devil will come to test you, to tempt you, he may come when you are at your weakest point, physically and physiologically. Jesus is found to have fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And ordinarily, he was supposed to die of starvation the following day, the first, for the first day. As a normal man. But when the devil comes to him, he comes with a solution. Instead of you dying and your powers to make food from stone, why don't you make this stone become food that you eat? Good intention. But Jesus uh, was having the written word not only in his, in his, in his, in his mind, but in, at his fingertips. He knew that the devil is so cunning. Without the word of God, he will manipulate events in our surroundings. And we may be caught in his own, uh, in our own trap. So, so when you know the word of God and you have it without doubt, it will help you, it will help, you help you at the time the devil corners you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you very much. Now, actually, the defense of Jesus here in Matthew uh, chapter 4 brings us to the Sunday part of the lesson and uh, here the title is It is Written and uh, what comes out here very clearly in this passage when there is this uh, discussion between Jesus and the devil or in the temptation that two aspects, that three actually three aspects that comes out on how he is tempted on each day, we find that the first is that time that he changes the stones into food. What does this tell us about the appetite? Mm -hmm. How the devil uses appetite of man mm -hmm. to lure them into deception. And another aspect which we get from Matthew, from Matthew 4, verse 10 going onward, is the worship. Mm -hmm the worship, that he wants him to be worshipped, other than God he wants him to be worshipped. Then there is the uh, worldly position paints, mm -hmm. where he displays earthly wealth. Mm -hmm. This is yours, this is yours. And this is what we need to learn mm -hmm. so that we get to know that when we are 
also tempted in this manner. How can we come out? Because essentially, this is why we are learning uh, about this today. Yes. These three forces, appetite, riches, temptation. Yes. These are very powerful. They still play their part in our human interactions. Uh, it's a common saying that uh, the gateway to a man's heart is, uh, is food. We, we tell, we tell, we advise our ladies that the gateway to your husband's heart is food. Food is very powerful. It's through food that uh, you can go out of your way to even create criminals for the look of food. We are in a time when people are facing very serious economic uh, situation. And people go hungry. And uh, it's very so easy to tolerate hunger. And this hunger drives us and can even take us. We can do anything just for food. The same thing depends for riches. We, we, it, it, the end justifies the means. We can do anything as long as we can be rich. And this has informed uh, the kind of uh, motivational talks, even in the spiritual worship. It's all about riches and money. And still it's influencing a lot of our various lifestyles. It's a very powerful tool. And so is the temptation. God has just, through the, our doctors, revealed to us that uh, we are in a very difficult time. Please take care, wash your hands, be careful, maintain social distance, keep stay at home. That's the knowledge that has come to us. But still we find that we, we want to tempt, we want to tempt, we want to go against those kind of uh, uh, very good suggestions, ideas that God has given us to fight even against the corona. But we tempt. Now, these three forces, the food, the riches, and the desire to tempt, uh, there's a common saying in my language that uh, 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 this, this, this is called what? This one that sees with its eyes, this one. Monitor, 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 monitor sees with its eyes. The monitor doesn't hear. It waits until it sees by its eyes. It, it, it's a monitor? A lizard, not a monitor. <laughs> a lizard must see by its own eyes for it to be able to know that it's true. The same thing we want to see before we know. So then these three dimensions of of, of, of forces are still at play and certainly uses them to really distort even the word of God and m m leave us astray. So we have to be very extremely careful in these three areas. Thank you. Uh, looking at the conversation here that Jesus is having with the with the Satan and uh, and we know that is on this vulnerable point. But he takes a defense in the word of God. Please, could you bring it out how Jesus uses the written word to defend himself? And we as Christians, whom we also know that there are some points in life when we are very vulnerable and we are uh, very easily defeated by Satan if we are tempted. What can we do? Thank you so much. The devil is cunning and uh, he, 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 he does things the same way he has done them before. Before Jesus comes to the picture, he tempted Adam and Eve food. And when Adam and Eve fell into the temptation, he said, this is a powerful tool for me. And that is how he was able to, 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 to take dominion over the whole world. Because we exchanged the power given to us by God, and we gave him and we took food. Now, when Esau, Esau, yes. and Jacob, and Esau comes back, Jacob comes back from, 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 from you know, um, looking for the one animal, and he finds he's so hungry. Food, food, soup. my fellow believers, food. He saw a nice soup, red in color. He said, uh, please help me some food, because I'm hungry. What did uh, Jacob do? Jacob said, for my food, please let exchange. Give me your birthright. I give you my food. So, and, 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 and Jacob said, what is, uh, Jesus said, what, what is food? What is butterfly compared to what I'm feeling tonight? So Jesus was vulnerable, very hungry. So, Esau, he was just, uh, uh, he starved for all day while hunting. But for Jesus, he is starved for 40 days. 40 now. At the point when you are most vulnerable, the way Esau was vulnerable because of his hunger. He gave in and gave uh, for, for, for when his backdrop and took food. The, the devil thought that 
Jesus would also give in and uh, take food at the expense of his righteousness. It calls for the knowledge of the danger and the knowledge of the word of God to be able to you know, defend yourself when cornered at your weakest point. May God help us that when we are cornered at our weakest point, we recall a few verses. And remember, he said it is written. It means he did not stop there after the temptation to go and peruse, peruse and see what the Bible says and come. There's no time for that. And so you need to read and grasp and have it at your fingertips. There's also one thing that comes out, and that's uh, in verse uh, verse six. If you may allow me to read Matthew four verse six, and he said to him, "If you are God's son, throw yourself down from." For Scripture says, "See who is speaking here." For Scripture says, "This is word of the devil." What does this mean? That even the devil himself knows the Scripture, and. We as Christians, we are vulnerable because if he knows the scripture and he knows it more than we do, then we love no defense. Therefore, we need to study deeply so that when it comes, we also defend ourselves with the same scripture that is put in. Because here shows that devil uses scriptures to deceive. He uses scripture to deceive. And we've seen so many people using scripture and misinterpreting the verses. Therefore, as Christians, we must be careful so that we don't fall into their temptation. And uh, going forward, Jesus still talking about uh, scripture. Now, he advances. Now, in Matthew 5, hmm, was uh, chapter 5. I want to read from 17 to 20. Uh, Elder, if you may read. Matthew 5, 5, 17 to 20. Mm -hmm. That's Monday part of it. Jesus and the law. Number 17. Yeah, 17. It says, Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. For as suddenly I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one title will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Whosoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But I say unto you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. This is uh, Jesus Christ uh, in one of his teachings and is referring to the laws of Moses. And this brings to our attention how Jesus was obedient to the law and how he was obedient to the word of God. Because we know that Jesus himself was the word. But he takes time to tell the disciples and the people he was uh, teaching, his followers, referring them to the scripture which was written so many years ago and is telling them about the law which to them they have just read the word you see lawyers say that the spirit and the letter of the law yes. and these people just read the letter of the law yes. and which were they were keeping but jesus here is trying to bring the spirit of the law as it may be now he's bringing the essence of that law into them and trying to make them to understand what it actually meant. Yeah. Because, uh, like he said, that uh, I think we read it last in, in John, that these uh, Pharisees were just searching the Bible, I mean the scriptures, yeah. putting scriptures, yet they did not understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They did not understand. And this is the understanding that Jesus is now bringing uh, at this point when he's speaking to these people. In his, in his, in his uh, conversations or teachings, he emphasized the authority of the written word, the Bible. And he, even in this conversation, when he talked about the spirit and the light of the law, 
He even told the Sadducees, he said, you are wrong because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. Which means they were not looking at the entire scripture in its right context. They were picking an item here and they just want to pick somebody in that particular item. And Jesus noticed this ignorance. This same ignorance didn't cease from that time. It has continued. So when it comes to the written word, you need to get the context of the entire what it talks about. And that's why it's not just understanding. It's not just the intellectual knowledge of what the written word says, but the power that that word has. And that power is not something that you can fight for. You pray for the Holy Spirit, you go in humility and seek the Holy Spirit to guide you prayerfully so that you attain both understanding and the power that that understanding gives. And when that one is done, and that's when even in your conversation about the Word, somebody will be able to use the same spirit to understand even what we're explaining about the Word. So it is important that as we go through the Word, we not only be disciplined to go through the Word, but pray for the power of the Word to come and help us to understand so that we act from what we have just read. And that's very important. Okay. Thank you. And uh, Moses, in Matthew 22, uh, was uh, 30 up to 40, Jesus is having a conversation here with the you know, Pharisees and uh, well, he's talking about the Ten Commandments. We've seen of late so many people trying like to inter reinterpret the Ten Commandments and uh, we are aware that there are Christians who want to select some of these uh, Ten Commandments and say this one this one does not fit as well, you can drop it. This one is okay, you can drop it. But Jesus here, talking about the Ten Commandments, which we are aware was given so many years before him. Hmm? So many years, actually is 1,500 years earlier before him. And they're referring to these laws. And he's trying to explain to them, and bringing an aspect here that people did not know about love. Maybe make a comment on that. How love and the Ten Commandments come in? Thank you very much. Um, Jesus simplified the Ten Commandments, which Pharisees used to put a load which was heavier on people. By not understanding, it was now a burden. But the, the Jesus comes and simplifies the Ten Commandments. He says, the whole of these Ten Commandments talks about love. And the, the prophecies. And the prophecies. Yeah. And he says, it, it, it is divided into two. The first four refers to the love of God. The relationship between human beings and God. And the second uh, portion, the six to ten, the relationship between human beings among themselves. So that if you love God with all your heart, and with all your mind, with all your strength, you will keep his sub. When you love God with all your mind and all your strength, you will worship him alone. You never worship other, any other God. When you love God with all your heart and your mind and your strength, you will not, uh, you know, uh, uh, take His name uh, 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 for, for granted. Uh, yes. So, so when you do this, God feels good. Now, we have to understand between human beings, having worshipped God and giving, given Him glory, we need relationship here, which is, you know, good. There is no uh, constitution in the whole world. If you look at each and every nation, which allows killing, or allows, uh, you know, adult, or allows um, somebody can just go. So, so, so we look at all the constitutions, they have been depicted from the last portion. Social life needs to be in order. Social life needs to be guided by some sanity. When God said, do not kill, he wants us to love each other honestly. When God says, do not uh, commit adultery, he refers to the, you know, the, the, the peace that is there when a family embraces relationship between husband and wife. And don't go out of your marital uh, uh, circles. For peace sake, and for your common good. So, so Jesus says, it's about love. Love for God, love for fellow human beings. And when that happens, 
you will do to somebody the way you would like them to do to you. You will fulfill the prophets and the laws. In, in our modern life today, we know there are uh, teachings or there are other aspects of life which may as well compete eh, with the teaching of the Bible. What, what would you say some of example of these teachings or uh, also says of authority, if you may, that competes with the teachings of God? Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, there, there are a lot of many teachings which are coming out. But I like the summary that Christ gave. Because love generates very good intentions, good emotions, peaceful environment. You, you give Anna more priority in terms of his or her needs than you do to yourself. It creates harmony in a family. But there are other teachings, other philosophers who are uh, bringing up, coming up with the, like the culture of personal development, the culture of uh, going for deep meditation, tuning yourself to nature, you close your eyes, you put the sound of birds, and you blank your mind, and uh, you, you, you think of what you want to achieve. And, uh, those thoughts come in, and then they get ingrained into their system, and uh, through there, you get motivated to be able to achieve them. Those are very popular teachings that come in, in, in this day and age. And they are very popular in the YouTube. And that's what uh, a lot of people are referring to. They are moving away from those two summaries that Christ gave. If there is love amongst ourselves, even the, the prospect, things that we are looking for. When you go to work, you work with love. You do the very best of what you can. Your productivity. And you always out for the good of the other person. And when the other person is also out for your own good, then the economy will just grow naturally. And the riches that we aspire for from the philosophers, they'll just come in. So that becomes a very fundamental authority, even in the practical sense of living. Those summaries that Jesus gave of the Ten Commandments. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, uh, moving forward, we find now the story of Jesus uh, after resurrection. Mm -hmm. Uh, that these two women, uh, two, two followers of Jesus actually, moving to Jerusalem. And in their, in their, in their, along their way, this, this discussion, very interesting discussion, which we want to learn in Tuesday, part of it, Jesus and all the scriptures. And uh, Matthew, uh, open Luke, Luke 24, Luke 24, verse 13. Now, Jesus, here, very interestingly, I don't know, Elder, if you may read very fast, we just get the picture so that we, we discuss it. Summary of it. Summary of it. Luke 24, verse 13, it says, Now behold, two men were traveling that same day to mm -hmm. a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles uh, from Jerusalem. Now, Jump to verse, verse 18. Very interesting. Verse 18. Yes. Then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened there in these days? Yes. Yes. What were these things that everybody should have known that they were surprised if Jesus did not know? <laughs> this, was, this was the headline news. Yes. It was in the standard, in the national newspaper, all the papers were broadcasting yes. the, the death of Christ and what they had just witnessed. Yes. And everybody from a child to an adult, they all, it was the headline news everywhere. Mm. And then here comes a stranger who walks in and says, what are you talking about? Yes. Really? What are you talking about? And they said, what? Are you the only stranger in this place? Mm -hmm. When the national and the standard is reading the headline of what has just transpired. Yes. And then they went ahead to narrate to, literally they know that this was Christ himself. Yes. <laughs> listening and seeking their, their opinion, creating a conversation so that it could lead them to a better understanding as we go further up there. Yeah. But uh, Elder, in this discussion something comes out and uh, when you keenly listen or read how these people are talking, what comes out is disappointment. These people were actually disappointed because the Jesus they expected what they expected from Jesus has not come to pass. 
Jesus himself is there. And he has risen and disappeared. We don't know where he is. Yet they were expecting a Messiah, a king, eh? that will lead them into independence, into independence eh? a deliverance. But they're not getting this, this disappointment. What, what, what can you say? What I pick from what I yes. pick from, from from this conversation is that uh, the the two uh, disciples seems to have been blaming Jesus of not knowing what happened or transpired of late. Yes. He doesn't know what is trending. Little did they know that it is them who do not understand a thing concerning what is trending. It, they do not understand the gist or the meaning of the death. And the suffering of Jesus. Jesus. In fact, Jesus is, 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 is more surprised. He's telling them in verse 25. Mm-hmm. Then he said unto them, O foolish ones, yes. and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Mm-hmm. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? So, so, so then they think they're giving Jesus the, the breaking news, and uh, Jesus is asking them, didn't you know these things ought to have happened before Christ is ushered to glory? And they were written. And they were written. Yeah. How did you read? So, so it means people read the written without taking care of the spirit of the writing. When you don't take care of the spirit of the writing, then you lose the meaning of the, right, the written word. And so, so, so Jesus exposes them. And in the long run, they seem to be interested and they invite Christ, which is getting dark, yes. to abide with them. The curfew, the curfew the time, curfew is, time is approaching. Yes. Just don't pass this place. Yes. You must go with us yes. because this place is dangerous. Yes. When during that curfew time, mm-hmm. Jesus broke the bread they were sharing mm-hmm. and, and gave them. This is a visitor, a stranger. You people have been served. He's the one breaking bread. When they ate the bread Jesus broke, their eyes were open and they knew him. So let's take care of this curfew time. When you are eating in the house, what are you eating? Jesus says at one point, my food is different. It is doing the will of God and accomplishing his mission. During the curfew, let's eat the word of God. Go to your shelf. Pull even the lesson, Daniel, the last uh, what? The other one. Just go through the books. The, what is written? You will, your eyes will be open, and you will see Corona or whatever trending. The clear way you should. And, and I like the narration. Yeah. They said it was after it had already done, and they understood. Yeah. They said, "Wow, how did you feel? It was like something was burning inside." Yeah. That same burning inside is also available to us now, as we read the word and prayerfully. Seek for understanding and God help us to understand. It will burn inside and give us some energy that can help us overcome even the current situation that we are now facing here. Yeah. The true encounter with, the with Jesus Christ yeah. right? actually is like the fire, the fire burning in them. Burning in them. Yeah. So we even as if we have a true encounter and experience with Jesus Christ, then we love, it will feel in us. We will actually feel it. And it will be like a fire burning. And Malim, actually, that comes from the verse 32 yes, yes. of, of uh, Luke 24. Hey, Malim, yes. Malim, something small. Yes. Jesus having perplexed them uh, by how unknowing, I mean, how less knowledgeable they were concerning him, mm. he now begins to expound about the scripture. Yes. And we talk about all scripture. Jesus means all. All, yes. In our time today, in our era, some people have said that the Old Testament has been rubbished by Christ's death, and now we are only concentrating on the gospel. Far from the truth, when Jesus began to expound, he said, for 27, and the beginning at Moses, it means from the first book Moses wrote Genesis, Genesis Exodus, Numbers. And all the prophets, Jesus refers to these written words by the prophets and by Moses. He expounded to them in all scriptures the things concerning himself. When you rubbish 
some part of the scriptures. And you say you are a follower of Jesus. No wonder one day some people wrote to Pope. I may not put the exact uh, person, uh, but it's from, uh, uh, from Uganda. And the Pope talked to the Ugandan um, uh, bishop to answer that guy concerning what is written and what is practiced. Then, then he said, it is written like this. We have chosen to practice like this. So, if Christians have the Bible and they choose to live another life which is not biblical, if they are following us in our own way of Christian, uh, you know, uh, uh, doctrine, they are the ones to blame because they have the Bible, they should follow what is written and all of it. And so, we should not blame anybody, but let us read. Don't rely or blame your pastor. Read, understand, and follow. Thank you, sir. Bible is for all of us to read, interpret. And uh, the only way we can interpret it correctly is if we ask the Holy Spirit mm. to lead us, to give us insight so that we may understand. It is good and not wrong yeah. that uh, a teacher maybe teach you, maybe a pastor may lead you. But then also in your own time, you get time and study the scripture so that you also understand it in your own way, what Jesus is talking to you about, which is very important. And this is why we have to emphasize and even re-emphasize uh, just the way you put it, Elder, that it is all scriptures. Yeah. Just like it was important during the time of Moses, it was important during the time of Jesus Christ, it is important during our time today. Amen. Every word, every letter. Amen. Thank you. So, moving to Wednesday, Jesus and the origin and history of the Bible. History. Yes. Jesus himself is the history. Because we know before history of the Bible, Jesus was there. And when the Bible is written, it is writ writing about Jesus. So it is Jesus himself, because we are told in John 1, 1 that he became word. The word became flesh. Mm? So history here is about Jesus, and we want to understand how Jesus himself used Bible of history. That is to mean, how was he referring to what was already written before him? Mm? Before him, which was saying that the other people who have said that Old Testament can be left. But here is Jesus himself referring what others are saying to be left. Yes, but you know, I, I like the way you put it, that Jesus himself is the history. Yes. In fact, you, you do talk to anybody who is academia, and they are, whether they are uh, our brothers from the Hindu religion, whether they are our brothers from the Islam religion, whatever the person, as long as you are learning, you know history. The history of the world is divided into two. The first portion is called AD, the period of, oh no, no, BC, the period before Christ. Yes. And the next is called AD, the period of time under dominion, after death. After whose death? Jesus Christ. Christ. Yes. So, so, so Jesus is the history. History, is called his story. His story before he died and his story after he died. Today, we are looking at him referring to a story uh, that happened. God instructs Moses and he tells him, if you are married, you should not divorce. So take your time before you marry. Our, fellow, our, our youth, take your time before you marry because it's not allowed to divorce. Then the, the, the Pharisees want to trick Jesus. They tell him, Moses allowed them to divorce. He said, you can write a letter, Talaka. But, but Jesus knows history more than these guys who have read the history of, of Jesus. And he says, Moses allowed them because of their own hard-heartedness. But Jesus said, said, from the beginning, it was not so. So Jesus has the beginning in his own head. He knows the beginning. Things written when he was away, mm. he can quote them. And so we should be able to 
or to refer to things that happen when we were not there. Today, those are three big bridges. So if you pass Nyali Bridge, if you pass uh, Cliffy Bridge, then the proper one, the Nyali one, you will not tremble as the first pass, the first time you pass that bridge. At least when you pass one, you have know-how and you have confidence of passing the next one. Jesus tells us that the words that have been written in the past were written for our own benefit who live today. And we may see the way that kind of word assisted people to live harmoniously that time. Then it is also for our benefit to live harmoniously today. Things will be outdated. Things will be out of uh, uh, order, but not the written word. What is the take home? What, Jesus what I, Christ in history. What, what I see, what the author wanted to bring out in yes. this, on this particular day, is, is the, 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 the biblical references that Jesus picked from the Old Testament to illustrate as his practice in the other discussion that we have just had. Mm. When he brings the issue of uh, uh, Abel in Genesis mm -hmm. and uh, David eating the bread mm -hmm. from the church and uh, Elisha plus uh, the, the widow then he brings the issue of uh, Noah. These are these were familiar writings yes. that his audience had read in the word and had seen. They knew the story, and it is these same 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 ones that he was using to narrate. And he's saying that uh, just as the days they were in the, the days of Noah, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until that day that Noah. Uh, all away, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. The days of Noah was a very familiar event when it happened, and those people knew about it. And he and, and was bringing this one, this, this historical aspects to teach these people what will also happen in the second coming. And those people they ignore, and just as you are ignoring and taking for granted, it will also happen. And so then Jesus using this real people in the real written world and the way they were understood by those people brings the authority of the writings to these people's attention as he was teaching them yes and this also with jesus making reference to all the testament uh, events and even prophets is uh, affirming the trueness hmm, of the trueness of this fact because we've seen so many people, you know, especially we call them archaeologists, going around, hmm? going around looking for evidence. Hmm? For example, whether there was this flood during Noah, was this ark really existed? Uh, did Jesus really walk the ark? This is none of the business of Christianity. This is none of our business as Christians. We should be focused on the Bible and know that everything which was written in the Bible is for us. And it's a warning, just like Jesus is referring to, that it was written during the time of Noah. It was written during the time of Moses to warn people so that they are prepared. So that when he is coming, they need to understand so that he gets ready. But just like those days, we are also, I can say, hard hearted. We don't want to listen. And this, if we don't change, then uh, all the way to. But I say we are hopeful because our Jesus Christ is so merciful, is so gracious, that is giving us a second chance. And second chance is now that we are alive. We are able to profess. We are able to read and get the knowledge that we want so that we can turn our ways, just like Jesus was warning here, so that we don't fall in the trap so that Satan is uh, is actually setting for us. Yes. And the, the, the author goes down at the bottom that yes. there is the power of Satan's deception. Mm -hmm. Even these historical facts which are mentioned, yes, they are those who deny them. Yes. Even the professed Christians, mm -hmm. they deny that these ones are not there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Satan, through his deception, are bringing out certain uh, historical perspectives which somehow is distorted mm -hmm. to prove that these were just hearsays. Mm -hmm. They were just like uh, stories uh, spoken around uh, the fireplace 
then, and they are not actually real. And uh, it's coming in the, like the, the, the Darwin, Darwinian thinking, the Darwinian thinking here, yes. the philosophers Theory. of the times. Yes. Yes. They are coming with the distortions. And uh, the, a human being who he is, because we think that independence is a virtue. I don't want to be biased. I want to be as objective as possible. In that spirit of the deception of the Satan, in your attempt to be very deceptive, if you are not grounded in the world, the other party can, sorry, can easily persuade you to even believe their narration of those events and their findings and how they are explaining them in a way that can easily deceive you to be sweet to know that even these facts that Christ was mentioning in the Old Bible, in the Old Testament, were actually not, not even there. So we should be very careful. We have to be firmly grounded in reading and understanding this event and seeing how they are. Even the historical narration from the archaeological findings, yes. they are very good narration and the listing of how these things happened. And we need to be grounded very firmly, to, not to be swayed by the deception of the Satan that is prevailing. Yes, so we know that in the Old Testament, it's not only based uh, by the life of Jesus, but uh, we, we have writers uh, who also go ahead and write beyond the life of Jesus, books like uh, Acts, Rome, Romans, and uh, Galatians, which were uh, written by Paul. So Paul, as one of the apostles who lived after Jesus, uh, also has an input into the New Testament. And interestingly, he again refers to the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Old Testament. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. What what do we make of this? In fact, I, I picked one of his, his first writer yes. writings yes. in the book of First Corinthians ten, mm -hmm. verse eleven. Mm -hmm. He read the Old Testament and things that happened to the Old Testament law of people. And uh, he says this in verse eleven of First Corinthians ten. Now all these things happened to them as examples and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. If you read it in Good News, you would see that the, Paul is saying things that happened to people in the Old Testament were written down. They were written down for them. They were written down for us. Those people who will live at the end. Because if we don't refer to how things started, we may not know the way things will end and we will get confused. Mm -hmm. And so Paul was referring to these books because he was able to read them. He was referring to the writings of, of, of the Old Testament because it, he was not with Jesus. In fact, during the time Jesus was teaching people and healing people, he was against that movement. But God revealed to him later and God knew his ability uh, to reach out to the learned because he was learned. And so God got hold of him and changed him to follow him. And he was able to recall the importance of written word. And this is why he's able to tell us today that uh, the Bible has things that were written a long time ago. They can't be outdated. They were written for us who live today. For our own admonition. Okay, take Elder. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe as we read uh, Acts 4 24 to 26, where Paul is, uh, is talking, and uh, I don't know what can you comment because here he's referring to again a story of creation uh, which happened again so many uh, years before they leave, and still they find a lot of authority in these words. Yes. Yeah. In, in, Acts, in Acts chapter 4, just before being filled with the Holy Spirit, yes. we find that these also are praising God for the delivery, deliverance of Peter and John. And in their praise, they raise their voices, acknowledging God as the creator and God speaking through David the servant. Yes. And that is the David's words are God's words. Mm -hmm. and, they, and, and, and David is quoted again by Paul, and they, by his words are attributed to God for those verses. That what God promised to the fathers. Mm -hmm. So you see here Paul picking the words written in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, through the spirit filled inspiration, he speaks them just as they were written. And uh, if you go there ahead, I like, I like, I like, I like where they are, they are stating how, how many times the scholars, the, the, the list, what the scholars have compiled. One scholar has compiled a list of 2,688 specific references. 400 from Isaiah, 370 from Psalms, 220 from Exodus, and so on and so on. To support the writings in the New Testament. So there's no way you can separate the two and claim to to have the whole testament to have been written by primitive people who lived a long time ago. Yeah. They had no computers, they had no internet, they had no, 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 their brain in terms of comprehending the issues that we face in the modern times were completely different. You can't say that because even the New Testament, the bulk of what has been compiled was borrowed from the Old, from the old Testament. The old testament. Yes. yes, that's what I, I, I can say on that. Yes. That's very important to note because uh, we know that the story in Old Testament, if you look at it in a nutshell, talks about New Testament. Yeah. In essence, it talks about Jesus Christ, who is to come. And Jesus Christ is the major character in New Testament. You come again in New Testament, referring to Old Testament. And this Jesus himself, who the Bible is based on, was there before. Mm. So, therefore, this is the actual reference and uh, uh, importance in all the scriptures like we've learned, that there's no part of the Bible that is not important. All of it is important and all of it is relevant for our lives as Christians today. So, maybe elders, because we are running out of time, uh, maybe one word each uh, in conclusion as we summarize uh, our week's lesson. I would like to recall a few things we learned in the first, uh, as we as we were starting, yes. about Jesus' temptation. And my emphasis will go to the, um, you know, to the third temptation. Where, no, not the second one, where Jesus is taken to the peak of the, of the mountain. And he is shown the kingdoms of the earth and their glory. Now, there is something we usually say in our the Lord's Prayer, according to Jesus. When you pray, say, Our Father, which in heaven, He concludes the Lord's Prayer by saying, For time is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, not for a season, but forever and ever. Amen. The devil does not understand that He is displaying kingdoms and their glory to Jesus. This belongs to Him. He doesn't know. He may think he wants to lure Jesus to, to worship him. And so my, my, my fellow members, let's remember that we should not be shaken by the devil. The kingdom is on God's hand. And the glory, they may glitter. The wealth, the, land, the developed world may threaten the developing world. That they are the haves and they are the have-nots. Doesn't matter. The power and the glory is to Jesus. So long as Jesus allows me and you to be called his brother and God allows us to be called his sons and daughters, you have the power, you have the glory, not for now, but for them. Right. And so the, 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 the devil went very discouraged yes. because the truth was revealed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elder. And in my Maybe. conclusion, yes, yes. The, the, way, the way forward, having gone through this lesson, and what I see here, that we thank God that he created the human, uh, uh, you see it's only the humans who are called beings. We, we, we don't hear of the, the cow, cow beings or lion beings. <laughs> it's, only the, it's only we, we, we the human race, who are called beings, which means we are becoming, we are growing. That is why we are a being. And as a being, God gave us the capacity to understand so many things both contrary to what is being taught, the other side of the world. So the best formula that God is giving us that we, as we are becoming, as we are known as human beings, people who are becoming, let us be grounded in this world as taught by the great teacher Jesus Christ. And when we do that one, 
we'll find our individual lives becoming much more richer. We'll find our family life becoming better. We'll be finding our church is growing. And even in our scientific discoveries, they are making more sense. Even the, the cure for the corona, guided by the scriptures, the doctors and the scientists will be coming up with better results. And even our economy, even as much as we are being hit by the corona times now, guided by the word of God, and as taught by Christ, and as also taught by his disciples, will just spring up as better knowledge and better understanding will come from being grounded in the word of God. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Elder Chola, and thank you very much, uh, Elder uh, Umingo. Oh, back to our viewers, we want to thank you very much for taking your time and uh, being patient enough to study with us uh, this week's lesson. As we wind up, we want to thank you very much and we want to conclude by a prayer from Brother B. Let's pray. Our Father, we want to thank you for enabling us to share your word with your people, whatever they are. We prayed that you lead us into helping them see what you had for us today. And we just want to thank you that your Holy Spirit may touch not only them, but also us, that we can be transformed on a daily basis as we grow grounded in your word. Be with us, for we have us trusting and believing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.